Back on Inside Tennessee, we're talking about the upcoming special session for the state legislature, a rare one. It's coming on Monday. I want to get to a statement from Mayor Indy Kincannon of the city of Knoxville about what she wants to see in this special session. She has five priorities. Uh, Senator Massey, will any of these pass? Number one, more resources for mental health in the Knoxville region. Sounds like that's a well, possibility. Well, state, statewide, I think it will be, yes. Number two, support for mental health orders of protection. Uh, well, I think there is a version that is not really an order of protection, but it's the duty to report, which is is different than an order of protection. But it, it I think it can get Will to it the same. Will restrict people from being able to possess a firearm? Well, not if they haven't been approved of doing wrong. That would be the only. If you do a pure order, pure pure red flag lip, you are taking guns away from somebody that has not been proven to have done anything wrong. Okay. And that's not the way we operate in our country. Number three is, uh, this is on our list of five, stronger domestic violence orders of protection. I don't think that's going to be addressed in this, this special session. Number I haven't seen it. Number four, additional laws around safe storage of weapons. Yes. We touched on that. Yes. Do you uh, think that'll pass? Well, I think it's not going to be penalizing, but it's going to be incentivizing. Number five on that list. Break, and I'm sorry to interrupt. No, no. Yes, a tax, tax break if you buy a safe box. Well, right now we give away gun safety locks free. I, know. I have several. But most people don't know that, so we're going to promote that more. Um, we are going to make it tax free, permanent to buy gun safes and, and the safety equipment. And then we're going to work more on educating people on what safe storage is. And so it will be incentivizing, it won't be penalizing. Number five on her list, this is Mary King Cannon, universal background checks on all firearm sales. Uh, that won't be discussed. I mean, I don't believe that would pass because I'm not, it's not part of the governor's package. And I'm not even sure it's part of 18 that would fit into the call either. Again, asking this because she is one of the mayors of the three largest uh, cities in the state. Don? Oh, I think we're going to let Susan go. Well, I just, uh, I've looked at all the polling and guns in Tennessee. Overwhelmingly, people would like to see a ban on semi-automatic weapons in the state. And they're used in some of these mass shootings. I know there's no appetite for that in the session or in the legislature ever, but why not? What what benefit is there for someone to own a semi-automatic weapon? And let weapon? me add to Susan's question. High capacity magazines, armor piercing rounds, things that the ordinary citizen in defending themselves in their home don't probably need. don't need. And Richard, you're a military guy, yeah. you get it. I'm a military brat and, and a law enforcement brat. I just don't see the need for that, but I'll go back, I'm, piggy, I'm yeah. piggybacking on hers. Go ahead. You know, the way I would, what I would say about that is uh, I don't think that, uh, I think that what we should do is I still believe that guns in the hands of honest, law-abiding citizens are not a threat. Uh, right now, uh, if you go through the process, you can get a 50 caliber machine gun and load it on the back of your truck. But, but there's a process. But there's a process, I agree. The, what I would consider is to going back to our original permitting system where there are background checks, where you do take a course, an eight hour course mm -hmm. that I've taken, my wife's taken, uh, and I think it's a very, very good course. I'd recommend anyone, everyone to take the course, but just to go back to where the citizens that are buying AR-15s, some of these high capacity rounds, let them take that. And if they're law abiding citizens that have taken the safety course, I think they should be able to, uh, to have one of those. But now you ask me, why do you need one? Yeah, of those? why do you need, you're not gonna go kill a deer with one of those, well, no, surely. because you can go to, they're, quite frankly, they're fun to shoot. You can really? go out and shoot. It's just, why do we need a car that goes over 70 miles an hour? Oh, fine, or 75. so that goes <laughs> fun we do to shoot? It. We, do, we still do it, but we insist that the people that have cars like that, they can only drive them in certain places, maybe on a racetrack, but, and they have to have certain qualifications to even drive those type of cars. But it's, that's what I say also with the gun, if they're not a threat to anyone. And I talked a couple of years ago to the Commissioner of Homeland Security, it was Colonel Trott at the time, who was the head of the Tennessee Highway Patrol, and I said, how many gun crimes have been committed with permit holders? Now this was in 2017, because that was the 20th anniversary. Uh, and we just that year went over 500,000 permit holders in Tennessee. He said they, they got back to him in about three days. They couldn't find any. Oh, the good old days when you used to have to have a permit. <laughs> that's, well, that's... So you disagree with the governor on, on removing that uh, notion of needing a permit to carry in the state? 
Uh, no, I'm talking about for those type of weapons. For okay. those for those type of weapons. Let's just go back. But for a handgun, do you, do you feel like you should have to have a permit or not need a permit to carry this? You, you know, this this goes back to what we were before. The argument was it cost a lot of money, and Senator Massey's bill that would allow the gun safety course, I would totally support making that course free, and then making even the permit because this is public safety, make it free, and then go back. Can to you the make it mandatory? Zones. Well, we did. We did for 20 years. You can. Yeah. It's a reasonable yeah, regulation. Yeah. We have to run, Senator Massey. We're likely going to see crowds of protests yes, around the Capitol next week. Will those make a difference in how lawmakers think about this issue? Well, if it gets too disruptive, it's going to make it hard for us to pass anything. And so I'm hoping that uh, it will be controlled, that it will be peaceful. Because uh, I will I fight for anybody's right to peacefully protest. Um, we've seen some protests this year that were not peaceful. Um, but, and I've been trying to work with our Commissioner of Safety to make sure that everything is, the safe plans are in place. And hopefully we'll be able to go there and get our work done without being influenced, you know, negatively by protesting. Senator Massey, Senator Briggs, we appreciate the time this morning. Thanks so much. Good Thank luck you. next week. Thank you. Thank you. We're back with our talk around right after this.